Assalamualaikum, salam sejahtera uh, kepada tamu kehormat uh, Om Setiaga Raja, uh, Dekan Deddy Wong, Profesor Christian, tetapi tamu kehormat dan saudara-saudari yang dihormati sekian. Saya ucapkan istri taniah dan penghormatan kepada FIA Penganjur kerana menyelenggarakan satu sidang yang penting untuk memperkenalkan dan mendalami pemikiran karya agung di antara karya agung dunia iaitu Tiru Keral karangan uh, Tiru uh, Prakasa Benua Ladies and gentlemen uh, it gives me great pleasure and I'm of course honored to be present to grace an important conference or the great um, thinker, sage, philosopher. Uh, I don't uh, read the original Tirukral in Tamil, but as you know, uh, it has been translated in various uh, editions. I've seen uh, three different English translations, uh, which certain variations, because some strong messages are always lost in translation, as you know. Uh, so, uh, going through various translations and various interpretations, and I'm honored again to receive the latest. He should have given me uh, the book um, when I was in prison, and I had all the time. <laughs> in fact, I must share with you that uh, I introduced to the general Malaysian public in the 90s, because I introduced the Kural in my budget speech. Well, you know, uh, those days, during the budget speech, millions of Malaysians are glued to television. They want to know about taxes and uh, some other reprieve that we provide for Malaysians. But I use that occasion to introduce, uh, as a Muslim myself, who will, of course, refer to the Quran and traditions of the Prophet. But I, th I believe, as a Malaysian who is aware, exposed to the ideas, and, and respect uh, human endeavor, then we cannot miss Tirukaru. So I use that, and you know how I had to endure. I had to have um, the head uh, of the Indian Studies Department at that time to come to my house to train so that I pronounce it correctly. <laughs> and uh, we did that. And uh, therefore, when Dewan Bahasa dan Tustaka uh, published the Terukural uh, Malay edition, the people, I think many Malays are quite familiar. When they have heard, they don't know who this guy is. Uh, as you know, even some Indians don't. That's also a problem. That's why sometimes the thinking becomes very blinker and narrow and shallow because you don't go through the great uh, epics the great classics that would help um, mold us, particularly Malaysia, which is essentially a multiracial, multicultural, and multi-religious society. So I must begin, of course, by the classical namaskaran, instead of just vandakal. I'm trying to learn a bit more. But you know, as um, you, those of you are familiar, I'm sure most of you are familiar with the Rukhara, it begins with the basic premise that like all languages start with A or in Arabic is Alif. So is Tirukara, reminding us that the beginning is of course the strength and the belief of the maker, the Lord and God. Uh, the original would be, uh, forgive my pronunciation, I've been training a few times today. Agare, Mutale, Yalitalam, Ati Bhagavan, Mudatre, Ulaka. Now, it is 1,330 couplets. In fact, I'm uh, privileged because even before on the budget, when I was going up active in uh, society work, I happened to, to, to learn about uh, in, in a Tamil uh, Muslim, Ibrahim, who memorized 
the the 1330 so i was amazed why must this muslim tamil guy memorize an indian epic but when you read you understand this is an epic which is meant not only for tamilians or indians but a message to humanity if only one can if vanquish the prejudices, the ignorance. When we want to hear about the clash of civilization by Huntington, that the superior culture is the Western culture. The Western civilization is the supreme. And then this was followed by Francis Fukuyama. The uh, Huntington talks about clash of civilization. Fukuyama talked about end of history because it's already established that the Western civilization will be the. This is interesting enough because a great um, Arab Christian scholar, originally Palestinian, Edward Sain, in response to a clash of civilization, he used this caption, it is not a clash of civilization. It is a clash of ignorance. <laughs> now you see in Europe, there is a rising tide of racism. Race-based parties, neo-Nazism has arisen. And we, in many parts of Asia, because of either our hatred for the West, or civil strife, or religious strife, has now engineered a new phase of neo-conservatism, neo-nazism, or neo-racism, or religious extremism. So we have to be aware. How do you defeat this trend? Only through knowledge. Quran talks about the term used is not uh, tolerance. The term used is litarafu, which means understanding. You not just tolerate other cultures. I don't tolerate this an Indian or Hindu, there must be an attempt to understand. Understand means through knowledge. To end in, uh, then you all talked about the uh, center for civilization. You must do it. How do, you exp how do you live in Malaysia for an Indian who has no understanding about Islam at all? Or a Muslim, knowing that there is a strong base, Muslim uh, Indian community in this country. Do not take any effort to understand what Hinduism is all about, what Tirukkural talks about, there is a failure. Now I did my, in my small part, when I, even when I was in government a long time ago, <laughs> when I had this series of conferences on Asian Renaissance. I'm a Muslim, Malay, Malaysian, but I put for Asian Renaissance, Jose Rizal, a Filipino Christian as the precursor of Asian Renaissance who was finally shocked and wrote this beautiful poem smuggled by the sister. He wrote it and put in the lamp and just shook the lamp. The sister didn't understand. You say, okay, bring back the lamp as a souvenir. That was ultimo adios. My ultimate goodbye to the Filipinos. A very powerful thesis and message to the Filipinos for the struggle. I thought we should learn because we are Asians. Of course, as a great literary figure in contemporary times, Rabindranath Tagore, the Bengali, or Jamaluddin Afghani, you should feel comfortable and familiar to look and talk about the positive traits. We organized a major conference because in our discourse is always Islam and the West, East and West, or Islam and Christianity. But in Malaysia, the narrative must be different. Of course, Islam and Christianity must be Islam and Hinduism. And as we did in the past, a major conference on Islam and Confucianism. The attempt is, how can we pray differently? Don't say, because we want to understand, we have to pray 
like the others pray. No. With our faith, our prayers may be in different form. But our humanity must be remain one. And this is, I think, to my mind, my limited understanding from these old professors who are renowned uh, thinkers in their own right in the study of the Quran. But I have read not once, twice, many times. And the last uh, privilege that I had in Sungai Bulu prison, <laughs> I had this translation of the Quran in English and Bahasa with me that I read and sought some un greater understanding and appreciation for a strong message of humanity. Nothing racist. No religious bigotry. No hatred for the others. Uh, skin or gender. But just love and affection, understanding what is morally and ethically strong, fundamental in our life, in the conduct of our affairs. The strength of this message of Tirukural to me is a strong moral ethical message. <laughs> now, and in this to my mind, if you look about civilizations, culture, uh, extreme uh, secularism and onslaught of the West is the, the decline of moral and ethical values. When you talk about change in Malaysia, okay, this is not political battle. It's not just juxtaposition or battle of ideas, but more profound to my mind is a de morally decadent leadership, blatantly corrupt because of erosion of moral and ethical values. You can be corrupt to the core. They say, come and kiss your hands because the leaders lack ethical values the followers are completely ignorant and opportunistic. I even took up an issue when addressing University of Malaya for the first time after 20 years, uh, two months back, because for 20 years I was not allowed to enter the university. <laughs> but I said to them, how is it a country, a successful, vibrant economy, you have seen the role of all races contributing to this. We have achieved phenomenal growth. In the 1990s, our growth was 9-10% a year. Our budget from deficit to balanced budget to a surplus budget. But how is it that in a decade or two, we could decline and our institutions destroyed. The judiciary compromised. Now we have a senior judge, in the highest court of the land, saying that senior judges are blatantly corrupt and judges were complicit and worked and decided at the behest of the executive. And mentioned, of course, the, the, the infamous Anwar case. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I thank God. I don't harbor hatred and forgive. Because I think, as Tirukral mentioned repeatedly, the strength of humanity <laughs> is moral, ethical values, but is also in compassion and forgiveness. You are prepared to forgive. <laughs> but the, our question is, how is it the country and the society can decline in such a short space of time? It's just not political leadership. We, of course, the rakyat, when it comes to decisions, okay, condemn political leaders. They are, of course, responsible. They should be charged. If they are found guilty, my lock-up cell in Sungai Buloh is still empty. <laughs> they are welcome to be there. But they are, you are talking about judges. You are talking about professionals. You are talking about professors who are either complicit to the crime or blind or mute. Where? How is it the entire 
source of knowledge, the understanding has dissipated into oblivion because of survival, opportunism, greed. Don't think this, to my mind, is important for us. Into today, of course, we encourage people to read Tirokhanal. Because if you have, you are a human person with a heart, and you read with concentration. You know, Tirukara cannot be read like a novel. Um, blah, 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 blah. No, you can't. Yes, yes, in my understanding, you read Tirukara. I read Tirukara. Particularly in the last phase, again, in prison, you have to get no, the 1330 cannot be read in a day. You have to read one, see and get the translation, or for me, get the interpretation and reflect upon it. Not for the others. Yeah. Now always we, we, we take, uh, every time we read something, ah, don't be a crook, ah, that flesh a crook. It is a reminder to us. Tirukaral is a great genius work of introspection. <laughs> because you read, I remember, you were talking about a neighbor, a relationship with the neighbor, how you work. Like the professor said, from the common man to the king, the message is penetrating is very powerful only a, a, a person with no human understanding of values would just ignore that it's compelling and i of course uh, again encourage but some muslims will say well anwar now is becoming more indian now talking about kirukra <laughs> this is malaysia I remember when I had Islam and Confucianism. I know eh, from Abim days, Islamic Islam, Islam, suddenly Confucian, Confucian, Confucian. <laughs> Lauza, Mengza, what's happening? And now you see, from quoting uh, some of the great scholars, I mean, I do. I was in Doha uh, two, three weeks back to honor a great contemporary Muslim thinker, Algerian, Malik Ben Nabi, who talks strongly, who says there's no point of reading the religious text of the Quran. If you do not, it does not impact upon you as a person to change your style, your life, your belief, and to clamor for societal reform. You can memorize the Quran, but you don't work for societal reform. There is no impact, impact or regard. So I talk about Malik Ben Nabi, the conference of Malik Ben Nabi. No. And then, of course, the Om Tegaraja said, why are you talking Malik Ben Nabi and not Teru Quran? So I come here and talk to about Tiru Quran. <laughs> it's fair. But you always, um, to me, um, um, appreciate the, the work, great works of literature. In fact, it's difficult for me to say about, just, it is not just literature. It's not just creative, uh, creativity. It is um, a vision uh, of humanity by a very learned, by a genius who talked so much with compassion, with belief, and with consistency. You know, that's why I say, if you have that understanding, um, the patience to understand. I mean, after all, why, why I'm a Malay, a Muslim, I have enough books in, on Islam to read. Why go and bother and force me to go, to go through in Tirukral, having difficulty in pronunciation? Is enough for me to sing the Na 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 Ita of MGR? <laughs> and even that to memorize memorize one uh, the, the lyrics part of it small part of the lyric it took me weeks <laughs> I think uh, probably in this semini by election will try <laughs> so, so I think the great thing again about Tirukura it is not it is not people confuse it is not Hindu epic. But even to me, reading uh, Ramayana or Bhagavad Gita, even Hindu epics, other than strict relig uh, rituals, the rest are just a strong message of humanity. The great dialogue. Yeah.
the arguments. I mean, these are to me uh, relevant, and I think we should, we should. Uh, of course, we have started. Many of our friends, our former leaders, have started. But I have not seen. You are right. Uh, I have not seen in our tradition, you know, leaders. So that's why you say Tirukkural. Uh, no one has heard. I mean, other than the uh, Tamilians or Indians, even Indians. You know, I've seen people in Indian in the north who hardly heard. <laughs> I remember meeting one. It's quite an intellectual, but he's so focused about. I mean, the, the great thinkers. I'm not. I'm not denying. I mean, they were, we were discussing at that time about Sri Aurobindo. Um, but but okay, I, 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 my again my limited uh, understanding of Aurobindo because, um, um, but. Uh, of course, I would expect an Indian to also know Tirukkural because it's not just the confined to the Tamil-speaking uh, public. Okay. Now, so let it be clear here. Number one in Malaysia, if we were to move on, is that it's not politics. Sometimes politics, if it becomes too mediocre, you talk about intrigue, who's going to what, challenge what, what rumor you hear next. I mean, it's tiresome, it's mediocre, and you don't focus on understanding and the welfare of the people. That's why when they ask me recently about, about uh, what you hear this and that, about the conflict or intrigue within Pakatan or Kalilan, I said, I'm going to attend, a, I'm now rereading Tirukkural <laughs> because I have to speak on Tirukkural this evening. I think it's better you know, to change the discourse a bit. Otherwise, the questioner is also ignorant. The leader is supposed to answer also semi-literate. So you have a society of medical society thinking that they're doing best. No. You see, what, again, I reiterate my point. Why is such great epics relevant to our society? Because it not only promotes understanding, but it instills ethics and humanity, which is terribly lacking. Why is government becoming so blatantly corrupt or racist or people it become an issue of contentious fightings all the time? It is the battles between the ignorant, the corrupt and the opportunists. We want to change this. To me, the 9th of May last year was not just changing our government, but changing our attitude. Yeah. Meaning of justice and compassion. If you talk about justice, and the Islamic justice or what Tirukkura is never confined. Justice means helping Indians in their states. Not enough. Or justice means assisting the Malay fishermen who are very poor. It's not enough. Justice means justice. Justice to the poor means helping all poor, the majority. <laughs> That is the new approach. Because if you believe in justice, how can you say, I believe in justice? Justice for my race, but for your race, it's up to you. <laughs> it's not consistent at all. This is not Tirukkara talks about. It's not as a Muslim. I don't believe that you should compartmentalize people like that. I don't care about Islamophobia. But what the, the colonial masters teach us, and many non-Muslims also feel, that's what they think Islam is all about. I don't, it doesn't matter, because what I believe, based on my understanding of the religious faith, you talk about, is, uh, is this peace or rahmat, blessings, is lil alami, humanity. The message is to all. If I am as concerned for the plight of the, very, uh, the poor Malays, I must also be concerned when I see the plight of the poor Indians, or the poor Chinese, or the poor Karazan, or Daya, whatever. That is the new Malaysia that must represent this new attitude of Pakatan Harapan. Now, the other aspect of Tirukkural is, of course, the individual, the family, and society. We have lost again the decline of these family values. Uh, in Confucianism, they talk about filial piety. 
Păi într-o cărăl... Oh, this is difficult. So just be patient. I'll, I'll train some more and by, by in next few months I can beat some of you. <laughs> this is about virtue in the household. <coughs> in, in the tradition of Prophet Muhammad, they say the household, the ideal household is like heaven. Baiti Jannati. My house is my heaven. So you have to achieve that. You don't go back home, achi achi pa, achi achi. Mana boleh? Mesti lagu piramli, achi achi buka pintu. But love and virtue reigns in the household first. That is the perfection that we achieve. That if it pervades in the family, they will pervade in the society. Angum Arnum Ude Tain Ilvat Ilvat Pandum Payamum Ada. If love and virtue in the household reign, this is the life of perfect grace and gain. If love and virtue pervade the family life, they become the characteristic and fruit of family life. Now tell me, which race would object? Which religion would object to this thing? This is what we talk about, the 1,330 uh, 1, couplets in Tirukkara, because consistently the message is values and ethics. Of course, um, the professor talks about, mentioned about Aram, Porul. The other one is what? Inba. Rupa Inba. So, um, it's also concern for others. It's very important. It's not just politics. It's humanity. How can it be being human and not caring for the others? Even animals do sometimes care a bit more. So that is why when it comes to polemics in this country about religious influence or secular influence, to me, it's not that relevant. What is relevant is, is that humanity, ethical values must prevail. Whether you're in politics, in governance, or in academic life, or in just societal work generally. It is hoped that this sort of uh, discourse, debates and discussions will continue. And I think Malaysia will emerge as a great multicultural power if we can make use of this new tradition of knowledge, of ethical values, which has been vastly ignored in our crave for change and for progress. This is what um, I think um, the central message of Terukara, and this is my small effort in trying to encourage this. I will uh, certainly do a bit more. I think not only supporting the efforts of uh, the conference of Terukara, but to make sure that uh, the program, like Indian studies, Chinese studies, Malaysian studies, Malay studies, understanding Islam, becomes something familiar to all Malaysians. Because only through this sort of understanding, dialogue, that we can reduce the suspicion, enmity. I know, however hard we try, it is not easy. But racism is something that you can spark easily. Issue one small temple can become a great national issue without even knowing the facts. Yeah. Without even knowing the facts. You ask him, you know what happened? No lah, but you cannot do that. I say, you cannot do what? You cannot do that. Similarly, something uh, touching about Islam. Somebody, for example, uh, provoke by throwing a pig head 
to one mouse, it becomes like a immediately ratio strike. You, it is the work of one or two crooks. Go after them. It's not something racial or religious. You don't start a religious war just by doing that. Is it silly? Yes. Plain criminal act to incite hatred. But once it cannot, it should not be done. We cannot react irrationally. This is a very important reminder here. Because I think it's a matter of time. There will be any another problem of a big head. There's another problem of some temple somewhere. It will be there. But rational principles, cooler heads must prevail. And we must support all efforts and leaders that would present a case for justice for all in this country. I would uh, like again to thank the organizers for this effort and apologize for trying to master a subject that I'm not too good at. And the only thing that I did was, uh, compared to many of my friends, I've read Tirukkural many times. Now, even the book, Prof. Professor, had you given to me last year, before I was released, <laughs> I would have mastered it very fast. Now, it is true. I read um, Indian philosophy, Chinese philosophy, Hindu epics, uh, Arab, Islam, Confucianism, and Western, Eastern, because I think that's the world. Just because you dislike the West, it does not mean that you should not understand. Because the West is not homogeneous. Not all represent the views that's against the others. No. Not all Westerners are Rudyard Kipling, who so anti-Indian and Hinduism. So I think, uh, therefore, uh, an understanding, uh, again, mastery of knowledge. Of course, not all can be professors, but it is a basic understanding of different cultures and civilization. So thank you very much, Nandri Manaka. We want uh, Dr. Tri to stay on the stage. We want um, Aya Oms also to come to the stage.